And for our wonderful dancers, I thank the Lord, amen, for our youth. This is our youth day. I'm so grateful to be here this morning again to share with you our, um, our lovely Lord Jesus Christ, truth as it relates to, to God's love. In fact, we started this uh, theme um, prior to Christmas. We were looking at the, the idea of God becoming a man and being born as a baby in a manger. What in the world would possess an infinite God, an infinite being to do that? Why? Why would he do that? So we've been looking at the love of God as expressed from the Word of God in John chapter 3. We're going to start there. There are a number, a couple of other passages we're going to look at, but John 3.16 once again will be our springboard. And so we've been looking at God's love. We uh, recently have been looking at the motivation of his love. Why? What motivates him? And there, there is something very compelling idea of what, what God has done in Jesus Christ. Compelled. He couldn't, he couldn't stand by and watch us perish. Compelled by his love. He's still compelled by his love. He still calls our name. <laughs> Why? Why? It, has it been because we've been so good or faithful? No, he still calls our name because he's compelled by his love. He is a great, great loving father. Listen again to the passage here in John 3, um, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved father what a marvelous marvelous uh, proclamation of your love and I confess once again Lord that um, I'm not sufficient for this weak um, shallow stammering tongue just not sufficient but Spirit of God take now my my um, my mind and my words and speak through me words of life. May your, may your word indeed accomplish what it's being sent out to do. Do a work in us. Just maybe someone in our midst, Lord, is struggling, looking, um, needing, desperately in search of something and they don't know. God, we know. We know today it's you that, that we need. Yes. Father, we, we need you. We need you. And I pray that that person um, who perhaps is still outside of Christ, who does not know the love of God genuinely, Spirit of God, do your work in their hearts. And, and, and for the rest of us who, who um, profess our love for you, who profess to know you, I, I pray that you will do your work in our spirits as well. Yes. Thank you for the privilege that is ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Motivation of God's love, the means of God's love is, and the magnitude of God's love. Motivation, it's his love for God so loved. The means, how did he love us? He loved us by giving. He gave his son and today and, and for maybe a couple of other weeks uh, we'll see what the Lord does but we're, we're going to be looking at the magnitude of his love yes. um, we started last week looking at this idea of just how magnanimous great is the love of God conceptually we, we can't really perfectly wrap our minds around 
the, the nature of God, let alone his, uh, his love. It, his love is, is um, matchless, it is boundless, inexpressible, um, it's, it's just beyond words, and, and yet words are all we have, that's all we have. And so when, when the text says, for God so loved the world, it is so important that, that we um, not gloss in our reading of, of Scripture. Um, and let, let me pause here for a moment. Let, let me pause here relative to the idea of reading the Word of God. We, uh, every year we, we start a new year to um, uh, you know, looking for God's blessings upon us. And... Here at Mana, one of the things we do, we, we launch a new year that we're going to read through the Bible in a year. And I pray that that's been um, the case for you and, and you and your family. You've been pursuing this idea of reading the Word of God. It is so important, important that you and I be found in the Word of God daily. Yes. Essential. It is essential to your life to your soul, to the health of your soul, is the Word of God. And perish the thought that you can be a vibrant Christian without the Word of God or reading the Word of God. The notion, absolutely, you need to just dispel it. Either you are not a believer, and hence that might explain why you may not have a desire for the Word. Either you're not a believer, believe, non-believers don't have a desire for God's word. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says the natural man does not comprehend the things of the, of the word of God. So there, there is this natural fallen, this fallen man has a natural propensity to, to resist the things of God. So he's not drawn here to the Bible. The believer, on the other hand, has the Spirit of God within him, but he also is, is battling against his, his carnal nature that is resisting God, resisting the Spirit. So if, if you're saved and, and you're not in the Word of God, you are carnal. You're carnal. You're, you're living according to the flesh. Now, now let me, let me um, pause and, and um, apologize. I did not get up here to call you carnal. I, I didn't, I, that was, it's not in my notes. It's, it, it was not part of my plan. But I, I, I don't know how to um, communicate the in essential importance for you as a believer to be in the book. It, it is so vital, so absolutely vital that you be reading the Word of God and studying the Word of God. Amen. Now, now let, me, let me say this. I, let me put a little caveat in there. The study of the Word of God is, is for believers, um, perhaps not for believers who are, are important. I, I understand. Some of us are important. And we don't have time. I understand that. And, and so, yeah, it, if you're too important... So important that you don't have time for God and his word. Yeah, you are. You're, you're important. But, but you know what? One day, you're going to find out just how important you are. Amen. Yes, you are. And, and it's going to be before you leave this earth. God's going to show you who is Lord <laughs> and, and why you need to be in this book. Don't, don't let God have to drag you to this book. Come, come of your own free will. Come of your, why, why you have the, the, the freedom in your mind to make a decision and, and say, I, I need God. Oh, you and I need him. We need him. We need him uh, more than life, more than breath. We need God. Man does not live by bread. Man lives by every word. The only reason you have breath is because of the word of God. God spoke and you live. Don't tell me you're so important. You don't have time to get with God. He's giving you breath. 
Let, let's let's re, reorient life in the reality of what, what really is important. What is really important are the things of God. We need this. We need this. So when, when I say don't gloss the book, don't gloss in, in our reading, we need to develop um, mature adult thinking when it comes to reading the Bible. The, reading the Bible is, is not like... Um, uh, Johnny went up the hill and, um, and Sue followed him and um, what we used to read in grade school and, and a lot of us approach the word of God with, with a, a, a juvenile attitude relative to the word of God and, and if, 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 we don't, if, we, if we don't understand it oh well, we'll just maybe next time we'll, we'll just see that, that, that's not an adult mindset we need to approach it with an adult mindset a spiritual adult mindset says you know what I, I really want to need to understand what God is saying to me because God is speaking by way of his book so we approach the word of God without glossing it we don't want to so when we read for God so loved the world what what excuse the pun it's intended what in the world does that mean Well, that's, that's, that's the work that, that we are we're, um, saddled with. We, we're responsible for both reading and understanding the Word of God. Amen. To that end, uh, one of the things I shared on last week, um, it is so important when we're reading it, we, we need to do some work. It does take work. This, this is not for the faint of heart. It is not for for uh, people who um, want to be um, coddled. This, this is for people who really want, and, and I'm, I'm assuming that every believer should want this. Every believer should want to grow in Jesus Christ. And in, in, in order to do that, it takes work. This, this won't happen by osmosis. You won't, you won't lay down tonight, carnal, and wake up tomorrow spiritual. It's not going to happen. It will happen because you spend time with God. And this year will not change. It will not change. You will not change automatically. I promise you, you're going to be the same this year as you were last year and the year before that unless you make a change in your relationship to Jesus Christ and get yourself in the book. The same thing you went dealt with last year, the same things you're going to be dealing with unless you make a concerted effort to study the Word of God. We're, we're doing that in, in, in our um, Bible studies um, on Wednesdays, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evenings. Um, Sunday mornings, we um, have 8 o'clock service. After that, we have the uh, Sunday school class, classes downstairs for young adults and, and young children. And we have adult class upstairs here. And we're looking at, again, the idea of the canon of Scripture, the, the, the bibliology, the study of the book. How did we get the Bible? Every Christian needs to know how we got the Bible. Um, and and to, to, be, to be able to answer, to be able to, and, and that's what Paul says, we, every one of us need to be uh, ready to give an answer for the hope. Why do you trust this book? See, we need to be able to explain our faith in this book. And, and that's, that's what the uh, Sunday school class on Sunday mornings is about. We, we would love to have you. But um, the idea here, again, in the text is we don't want to gloss it. We really want to spend some time looking at some historical groundwork. Um, when, when we come to scripture, um, it's an ancient book, so we want to look at it from, from several perspectives, um, a historical perspective, because it was written um, thousands of years ago. We want to look at it from a grammatical um, perspective, that is, these words mean something. They were translated from some language. We need to understand that. We need to understand it also from a theological perspective, that this is a, a theological book, a book that is talking about God. Jesus Christ is the theme of the book. So we, we want to pull all of these themes. All of these themes are running throughout the scripture. And, and it takes work to kind of piece it all together and come, come away with what God has said.